Uh, welcome back to lecture 11 part 2. So in first part of this lecture we identified a special type of process called a threshold problem and in a threshold problem we have a threshold delta t min below which we have no further heat recovery uh, which we would expect in a pinch problem as we go uh, down to let's say uh, a lower delta t min and also at this low delta t min we have no further change in the utility requirement okay so now the question is that do we have to consider different design techniques for our heat exchanger uh, network design and our heat recovery uh, calculations in these threshold problems okay so let's look at this uh, particular case where we have what we call a low threshold uh, delta t min that is actually way below the most normal delta T mean that we use in our processes of like 10 degree centigrade. And if we draw, uh, for example, um, uh, our composite curve, we can see that we have the requirements for both the, the steam, that is the hot utility, and then we have the requirement for the uh, cold utility if we are designing this process at delta T mean of 10 degree centigrade. So although this is uh, a threshold problem, but the heat recovery or the heat exchange the network design in this uh, particular case can be considered exactly as it is a, a pinch problem. Now, what about something that is called um, high threshold delta T mean? In this particular case, the delta T min is above our, here for example, is above our normal delta T min of 10 degree centigrade. Consequently, we would only design at this uh, threshold uh, delta T min because by using this threshold delta T min, we actually only have the hot utility requirement and we have zero cold utility requirement. Okay. We would not design below thre delta, um, threshold delta T min as um, we would have a lower minimum approach temperature, but no further increase in heat recovery and no further decrease in cold utility requirement. Okay, so consequently, designing at uh, threshold delta T min would be the most appropriate if your uh, delta T threshold delta T min is above your, uh, for example, the normal delta T min. In terms of design of the most difficult part of the design. Uh, is the end of the process at the no utility act. Okay, so basically uh, the cold utility uh, of the process is, is not present here. So it means that all the hot streams have to be satisfied by the cold streams because we don't have the luxury of giving some of the heat from these streams to the cold utility. Okay, uh, in contrast to that, on the this side of the process, we have the hot utility. So some part of the heat. Uh, can be provided, for example, some part of the heat to these streams can be provided to the uh, from the hot utility. So satisfy the the um, the temperatures at the no hot utility end first, and then move toward the highest temperatures, where we have much greater freedom uh, in design because we have the availability of this hot utility here. So let's look at this uh, particular problem here. So we have three streams here. So we have stream three that has to cool down to 400 degrees centigrade. We have stream five that needs to cool down to 200 degrees centigrade. And then we have um, stream seven that needs to cool down to 150 degrees centigrade. And in terms of our minimum cold utility requirement, it's zero. And we have a design delta T mean of 50 degrees centigrade, okay? So in terms of design of this process, first we have to take care of the cold side of the, of the process and, and here as well. And then we will look at the hot side of the process. Now the question is that uh, which cold and matches are essential and uh, where do we start the problem? Okay, so we note that the hot stream 7 has to cool down to 150 degrees centigrade which is the lowest temperature that the hot stream has to cool down to, okay? And we want to look at this stream before we consider the streams that are at a higher temperature, like the stream of 200 degrees centigrade and the stream three that needs uh, to cool down to 400 degrees centigrade. 
Now the next question is that do we have a choice of what streams we can use? And if, for example, uh, our stream needs to cool down to 150 degrees centigrade and we have um, a minimum approach temperature of 50 degrees centigrade, then consequently we need to have a temperature of a cold stream of 100 degrees centigrade. Okay. And in our problem, there is only one stream that has a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. Okay. So consequently, we place our, our heat exchanger between these uh, stream seven and stream two and then calculate the necessary duty and the temperatures okay we then move uh, to our next hot stream that has uh, the lowest temperature in this particular case uh, stream number five has to be cooled down to 200 degrees centigrade uh, with a delta t mean of 50 degrees centigrade we need uh, a cold stream with a supply temperature of 150 degrees centigrade so we locate uh, the cold stream uh, here, for example, stream two, and then it is going to uh, the stream with um, uh, with the temperature supply temperature 150 degrees centigrade, and then place the heat exchanger uh, at in, in this combination. Once we move to the higher temperatures, um, then basically we have a considerable degree of freedom, and uh, consequently there are very many solutions that can be achieved. What are some typical examples of threshold problems? So here we, we can see the production of ammonia. So when we have uh, ammonia production, we have large amounts of heat available where the hot streams have to lose significant amount of, uh, of heat uh, in, in the process of going down to their target process, uh, target temperatures. And uh, on the other hand, we have the cold streams that has less requirement uh, in terms of the heat. Okay, and also because of the the presence of very high temperatures, we have no requirement of the uh, hot utility here. We only have the requirement of the cold utility, uh, and as such, because we only have one utility and no co no hot utility, this ammonia uh, production process is a threshold process. Uh, however, we may end up uh, converting that uh, threshold problem of ammonia plant into a type of a pinch problem depending on how much heat we have to dispose of from the hot streams in the ammonia plant to the cold utility. As an example, rather than disposing all of this excess heat uh, that is available here to this cold utility, we can use this high level uh, uh, heat to generate some HP steam. Okay. And then, as we uh, seen in the previous lecture, we use this uh, um, high pressure steam generation into our composite curve. And by doing that, we can generate a balanced composite curve. And by doing that, we can see that we have now developed a utility pinch. And once we have this utility pinch, our design problem changes. So now we have to design uh, in a region above the pinch and then a region below the pinch. Okay. So by including this uh, uh, HP steam generation as a cold utility, we have actually changed our ammonia um, threshold problem into a pinch design problem. So although it is not a process pinch, but a utility pinch, but still now we have to design in two separate regions, just like a pinch problem. So in summary, some problems uh, or, or some processes uh, exhibit a threshold where only either hot or cold utility, utility is required, but not both of them. And uh, a true uh, threshold problem usually have a large temperature driving force and no pinches. So there is a large temperature difference between hot streams and cold streams, and we can transform the uh, threshold problem into a pinch problem when we employ multiple utilities in the overall design. So we can always uh, convert uh, a threshold problem into a pitch problem by including multiple utilities or by using uh, or by generating utilities, for example, high pressure steam um, in the process as well. Uh, so that's all for this part. Thank you for your time.